Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving an interesting trigonometric equation. We have sine x to the fifth power and cosine x to the seventh power and their sum is one. First of all, let's use an well-known identity. What is the most important identity in trigonometry? I think a lot of people will agree that it is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. How can we use this? Well, we have uh, a kind of like an uneven or maybe odd powers of sine and cosine on the left hand side, but we have a one on the right hand side. So we can replace this one with this. And that's gonna help us a lot. So let's go ahead and do it. Replace one with sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Obviously, Replacing x sine squared plus cosine squared with 1 would be a better thing, but in some cases, it's the other way around. Okay, so let's put the same kind uh, of trigonometric functions together. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the sine squared over here and the cosine over here. So that way they're kind of together, right? And then next step, obviously, hopefully it's obvious, would be factoring sine squared x take out sine to the third minus one take out cosine squared one minus cosine x to the fifth power okay great now how does this help this is the million dollar question right okay so here's how we can use this we know that sine and cosine are bounded right from above and from below that's what bounded means it they always take values between negative one and one inclusive so, sine x is less than or equal to 1. That's the maximum value, 1 it can take, right? Cube both sides, nothing changes. Sine cubed x is also less than or equal to 1. But when you subtract 1 from both sides, you notice that this expression is non-positive, or should I say less than or equal to 0? Okay, great. So this is less than or equal to 0. We know that. Let's take a look at the other one. 1 minus cosine to the fifth. Notice that the reason why we look at something like this is after factoring, notice that uh, the expressions inside the parentheses kind of have like an opposite pattern. Uh, one of them is like sine minus 1. The other one is 1 minus. So they're kind of switched around. Makes sense? So here's what we're going to look at. Cosine x is less than or equal to 1. And from here, if you multiply both sides by negative 1, negative cosine x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. We know that, right? It's always... Uh, greater than or equal to negative 1. And then we can just raise both sides to the fifth power. That gives us this, same thing. And then if we add 1 to both sides, 1 minus cosine x to the fifth is going to be less than, or I mean greater than or equal to 0. We're adding 1, okay? So this is the other thing we got. It means this is always greater than or equal to 0. And sine squared and cosine squared obviously cannot be negative. So they, they're not really going to impact anything. But notice that we have a weir weird situation. If one side is negative, the other side is positive, then it's kind of problematic, right? So they both have to be zero. So here's the conclusion. Sine cubed x minus one equals zero, or, and it's or, right? One minus cosine x to the fifth power is zero. And this one gives us sine x equals one because if you cube root, it won't matter. And from here, we can basically find x value. Where does sine equal 1? Remember the unit circle uh, at pi over 2. So x is going to be pi over 2. And of course, you're more than welcome to add multiples of 2 pi, but I'm just interested in values that are less than uh, or equal to 2 pi. And from here, we get cosine x equals 1. And that happens only at 0 right? So we can write x equals 0. Obviously, 2 pi is a solution. You know, uh, you can just keep adding. So if you add 2 pi to pi over 2, you're going to get 5 pi over 2, so on and so forth. You just keep adding 2 pi and you'll get infinitely many solutions. Make sense? Okay. So those are going to be our solutions and you can definitely test them. Uh, there won't be any other solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick, which is kind of interesting. So the sum of the fifth power of sine and the seventh power of cosine gives us a really interesting graph that has the sine curve pattern, but just in a different way. 
kind of elevated. Certain parts are elevated. But anyways, they intersect at um, like 0 here, pi over 2, and then 2 pi, and you don't see it in the graph, but it's there's a pi, 5 pi over 2, so on. So it's just going to repeat. The pattern is going to repeat like this, so you can find the period from here, basically, right? But notice that we're hitting the maximum point, right? So they intersect. They're actually tangent, not just crossing each other, but they're tangent, which means that we could actually look at this function and try to find its maximum or minimum value, you know, take the first derivative, so on and so forth, but that's another story. Anyways, so the only solutions are 0 and pi over 2 if you're looking for something between 0 to 2 pi. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.